at that lovely smile. It's Jack D. She loves her country. It's Jamelia. And their team captain, Chuck. On lock. And facing them tonight, boy oh boy, it's Steve Jones. Notorious D.O.D. It's David O'Doherty. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, to your host, Jimmy. And welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 30% of people would consider moving abroad after a holiday? I read about two girls who recently went on holiday to Peru, and they liked it so much they're staying for six to eight years. 20% <laughs> of travellers claim to be members of the Mile High Club. I once had a near miss on a flight to Thailand. Sorry, not near miss. Pre-op transsexual. <laughs> And 23% of Brits have never visited France, which means they've never experienced the thrill of sitting in a cafe on the Champs Elysees and being put off their croissant by the sight of a woman's hairy armpits and the smell of dog shit. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panelist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Strictly Come Dancing has started again. <laughs> it's back on. It's huge. Yeah, yeah it is huge. It's massive. <laughs> Although are you, are you, are you the lineup what? is a bit... Well, I think most of them should bring a utility bill. I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there were huge stars on there. Uh, who? With Vanessa Feltz. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Yeah. I said no. <laughs> no, I did. I did that as well. I've been. Lo I've been locked in a house with Vanessa Feltz. So I can testify. <laughs> of course. She's, yeah, I did. When well, uh, you did Celebrity Big Brother. I did Comic Relief Big Brother in 2001 with Vanessa Feltz, and um, and she is. Uh, she's she's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you last in that, Jack? I was in the whole week. I won it, of course. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember charm that. Charm and personality that yeah. shines through. <laughs> uh, uh, captured the nation's heart. I, I, exactly. <laughs> people, people just sort of warmed to me. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think people kept stay. you in because they knew it would irritate you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, do you think maybe she's just said, like, I'll come and do the show, but I'm just not going to do too much because I'm a bit heavy? Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean, like, serious, or what do you...? No, I mean, like, seriously, Oh, no, you're like... being incredibly bitchy. OK, great. No! <laughs> I didn't, didn't realise where, where you were going with no, this, but no, I'm with you. You can't go, no, no, no. you just called her fat. No, you go, I didn't. No. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't call her fat. I didn't say she... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> because I'm just saying she hasn't danced much, and to me, if you go in on a dancing show, you should dance. <laughs> She, no, in your defence, she yeah. came on my show at the start of the year, Let's Dance, and she said, I'm not going to dance. And literally, That's I don't know saying. if you saw it, we lowered her from the ceiling onto a gigantic eight-foot-long cannon with her legs spread-eagled in a sequin leotard. <laughs> Is that the only way you could get her in the building? <laughs> David Adokity, would you go on the show? I was just trying to think of what it would require for me to watch it. First, <laughs> <laughs> it would require either a baking element <laughs> or a uh, crystal meth element. <laughs> the ultimate TV show would be a combination of bake... So, like, the Great British breaking bad off, where <laughs> they, they'd all cook meth, but then the judging would take ages. <laughs> yeah. John, would, would you do Strictly? No, I don't dance. The only dance I do is YMCA. <laughs> That's more spelling than dancing. <laughs> Sean, presumably you're pretty... I mean, you watch the show. Would you go on the show? Would you go on Strictly? Well, you know, if... Um, <laughs> if my whole career fell apart in tatters... <laughs> and I'd really no option and a lot of tax bills to pay and... <laughs> ..situation... <laughs> no, I actually didn't mean that. You only go on it if your career has reached a certain point. Basically, okay. you, you have to throw yourselves up into the sort of, like, tides of popularity and hope you get washed up on a beach, not smashed to pieces on the rocks. <laughs> right, then, well, on that, on that note, Jamelia, would you do it? <laughs> Stop. What? <laughs> 
honest to God, I get asked to do it every single year, and just hell no. <laughs> it's one of the two biggest shows on TV. So, I mean, it's, do, you, do, you know, do you know the stupid amounts of money they offer you to do that show? I, I would just oh, what, wouldn't... How, go on, just, how much did they offer you? No, they're, like, ridicu oh, I mean, ridiculous what, amounts of money. You can buy a house, put it that way. And yeah, I, but you I live in Birmingham. <laughs> and see if Strictly is up there. <laughs> yes, indeed, Strictly Come Dancing has started again. In the first episode of this series of Strictly, everyone agreed Abby Clancy stole the show. Typical Scouser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's just have a brief musical interlude while John shows us his dancing. Right. Made to dance. I'll dance on my own in my kitchen. And that is the only... a girl. I was at a wedding the other week and a girl kept going, Oh, why don't you why don't you go and have a dance? I said, I don't want to dance. And she went, Are you boring? And I went, Yeah, and you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> John's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about? Uh, it's gonna be Ed Miliband. Ed Miliband. Go on, tell me the story. Well, the story is that the Daily Mail of uh, I think personally they've pretty much created a, a Batman. The Daily Mail are the Joker, and they've shot uh, Ed Miliband's parents in front of him, specifically his father, by saying that he's a, a Marxist who hates Britain. And Ed Miliband has gone apeshit crazy over it. <laughs> I don't think Ed Miliband is capable of going apeshit crazy. Let me, about him. Let, let me tell you, if he is Batman, he needs to do so. He needs to fight fire with fire because you can't win a war of words with the Daily Mail. He needs to go down to where the Daily Mail is made. He needs to wait for the journalist who printed the story to leave the building. Then he needs to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I think the most frightening thing is that the Daily Mail have possibly run out of living people to hate. So <laughs> now they've had to move on to the deceased. <laughs> and soon they're going to be done with all of them. So they're going to have to just move on to fictional characters. I mean, oh, look at Pooh Bear. <laughs> just lounging around 100 acre wood. Broken Britain, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, what do you make of uh, Ed Miliband's father being slagged off in the Daily Mail? I think it's like, like a lot of people, I think it's pretty awful. Um, Ed's dad is a lot similar, a lot in common with my dad, because um, uh, Ralph Miliband fled Belgium to escape the Nazis. Right. My dad fled Belgium to escape Belgium. He was, <laughs> uh, he was there, he wasn't enjoying it, so he had to... Uh, he got on one of the last boats out. He was one of the lucky ones. <laughs> but, um, no, it, it is, it's true. Everyone... Stop staring at me. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> I suppose until you've been to Belgium, you don't realise how much you do love this country. <laughs> Vinnie Jones uh, is one of the few people who's... who's... Vinnie Jones left... <laughs> left the country. He lives in America oh, now. Oh, uh, don't turn your back on me. <laughs> Just be normal. Just Where be did a... I look? <laughs> Be a normal human for a change. <laughs> Look up there. Is everyone no, happy with that? But if you were, if you were, <laughs> that just seems rude. The Sean was, Sean was staring at me. I felt like a bit of fresh meat in a prison, and he's an old timer. <laughs> <laughs> Weighing me up. Jimmy, no, would you, would, if someone slagged off your dad, I didn't even. Well, <laughs> <laughs> is this not no? Is this your personal it's... space? Am I invading it? Is that what it is? It's it's, it's weird, Sean. I don't know. <laughs> if someone slagged off my dad, I don't care because he's a knob. So. Um... <laughs> Can I just say, Sean is now taking the piss. No, no. <laughs> just, like, no, I just saw it. Whilst Jamelia's talking, I'll look at Jack. No, no, no. <laughs> Look at Jamelia. Where do I look? It's Can someone behavior. get me a book or something to look at? <laughs> see, see, the way, see the way John is over there? Just perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Look at that. be a bit more like me, mate. Mm. <laughs> totally relaxed. I'm annoyed that we didn't, we didn't uh, get to slag Vinnie Jones off. Well, really Vinnie Jones, yeah, he's another great point. academic, of course, who's left the country. <laughs> Why did he leave the country, then? Because he, well, he, he, he says he doesn't, like, he doesn't like Britain anymore, it's not what it used to be, he's gone to live in America. But his argument about Britain was that he said, if you landed me at Heathrow now in a blindfold and took it off, I wouldn't know which country I was in. If you landed in Vinnie Jones's kitchen and had a blindfold on and took it off, you wouldn't know which country you're in, because he's still eating English food, probably in an English house. I bet he's got football tops on his wall. I bet he's still got Sky Sports. <laughs> and you can say what you like, cos if he finds out about it, it's cos he's watching this show, so he's watching English TV, so he's a fucking dick. <laughs> Do 
<laughs> well, well, actually, I've met him and... Yeah, no, I, I read much. that, Jimmy. And it's, uh, because he's, he's Vinny, as, he's, as you rightly point out, Vinny said, if you blindfold, we put him on an aeroplane and landed in Britain, I wouldn't know where I was. And I felt like saying, well, that's, that's what blindfolds are for. <laughs> <laughs> It, that means it's worked, Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> OK, let's see if the male Miliband row is up there. <laughs> yes, Ed Miliband is a war with the Daily Mail over an article attacking his father. It begs the question, why do the Daily Mail hate Ralph Miliband so much? He was a Marxist academic, not a black Romanian disabled single mum on benefits. <laughs> Sean Steen, what else is the nation be talking about? What do you think, Jack? Sorry. Jack! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Jack? Um, well, America, probably. Are they America? Yeah, America. It's a huge story. Go on. The America. American budget. They can't pass a budget. Loads of state-run organisations, um, departments have had to close because they can't be currently funded. Load, loads can't of things. So tourist destinations have closed as well. So the Statue of Liberty's closed, the Grand Canyon, Alcatraz, museums... Have they closed zoos. the Grand Canyon? They put a tarpaulin over it. <laughs> I think it's just a massive zip. It just yeah, goes zip. Yeah. Nothing to see. Move on. <laughs> Statue of Liberty's just sat down with a cigarette. Just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> these things, can't you see them from a distance anyway? I don't really see what the... You know... <laughs> you're not even allowed to look at them, or you're... Or you're <laughs> even, if you, even if you cast a glance at the Statue of Liberty, you're a scab. <laughs> Especially with my crazy googly eyes. <laughs> the worst story I heard was on death row, uh, guys are having to electrocute themselves by the broom handle. They're all stacked in there. <laughs> I tell you what I don't like about the situation. I do actually know something about it. Is the fact that they're, they're fighting. I know, I know you're quite shocked. But um, <laughs> they're, 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 they're not fighting. But well, it is kind of fighting. Whoever it is, Republicans, are they the opposite? What was the thing you knew about it? <laughs> so Obama is trying to pass Obamacare, which is kind of like an NHS. Yes. So basically, the Republicans, they just, they just want people to die. They're like, you know, no, they do <laughs> because. No, they do. This is the nub of it, OK? So yeah. there are 44 million Americans unable to get health insurance. Yeah. And if you don't have insurance and you visit the emergency room in America, it'll cost the average person $1,200. So, well, no, if you're pregnant and you haven't got health insurance, you need to go to the hospital, they knock the baby back in with a mallet. <laughs> 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 if anyone needs health care, it's Americans, isn't it? Because they are unhealthy. Most of them have got four buttocks, haven't they? <laughs> When they eat shit, I mean, their blood doesn't pump around the system, they squeeze it around like pate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to the film, because, like, they made films about 9-11, they do films about everything in America, don't they? So there'll be, like, a film called Shut Down. <laughs> it's like Ryan Gosling in New York going, those sons of bitches closed down every public toilet in the northeast <laughs> side of the city. <laughs> I gotta take a shit. <laughs> I think the supreme irony of it is, uh, I don't mind if I'm the one who happened to point it out, but I think the supreme irony of it all, <laughs> and uh, I hope I'm quoted in generations to come for this observation <laughs> I'm going to make... Can I hush, please? ..is, um, it's called the land of the free, but nothing is free. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. John Steen, what else have the nation been talking about? They said the Tory party conference. Uh, you people and your Tory party conference. <laughs> who are they for? Who are political conferences for? It's the only people interested in this are on the stage or in the audience, frantically clap. Imagine <laughs> if you said something at a political party conference and it didn't get a round of applause. You would be so... Like, you can say a burrito in the middle of the day is quite heavy. Everyone's like, ah! <laughs> True! <laughs> but even with that, like, it's just... It's gentle applause, isn't it? It's not like Matt, cos the papers have been saying, oh, it's Cameron, it, was a, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't an amazing reception. And you think, well, it was a Tory party conference. They're not renowned for people getting their tits out <laughs> and, like, <laughs> spraying beer everywhere. At best, it's going to be Tories going, yeah, so I think that's probably a bloody good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have a little look at the Tories in action. This is David Cameron giving his speech. In his speech last week, Ed Miliband promised that he would never be photographed with his shirt off in public. And Ed, after hearing that speech, here's the deal. 
You keep your shirt on, I'll keep the lights on. <laughs> What's he saying, though? He's saying to Ed Miliband, you keep your shirt on and I'll turn the lights... On. I'll turn the lights on. So, is he saying he wants to see him naked or not? It's, <laughs> it's a really mixed message, is that, what I'm that, saying. Ed Miliband had said uh, there was a shots of him uh, yeah, on, on the holiday, beach, yeah. and he said, yeah, I, you won't ever see me with my shirt off, you know, trying to promote myself as some kind of relaxed individual, and he's saying, yeah. Let's yeah. have a look at Cameron Topless. <laughs> you notice he's not looking directly at Jack there. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jack standing with his hands on his hips on the beach. <laughs> The other thing they kept saying again and again, hard-working people, for hard-working people. Well, you know, what, what, how about a party for people who can't be asked? You know? <laughs> like, like most of the rest of us, because most of us don't, don't actually want to have to work very hard. That's the whole point. I mean, uh, and there are an awful lot of us out there. You think about it, there must be loads, loads of people who aren't hard-working. Loads of people, oh, God. But, but, the bloke who operates Tower Bridge. He, that goes up and down once a week or something, doesn't it? He's just he's sitting there, <laughs> picks up the phone, what? Oh, I did that uh, again? Oh. <laughs> oh, OK, there you go. Have they won you over this week, Steve? I will say that Cameron is a wily minx. He was interviewed and asked how much a, um, uh, a loaf of bread is. And he said, uh, actually, uh, I wouldn't know, I make my own. <laughs> and then they said to him, uh, how much is a pint of milk? And he said, uh, don't need it, Sam's pregnant again. <laughs> What was that knocking sound on him? No, that was the suction cup. That's it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Such a bad Pinocchio. Have you never milked a did. woman before, John? I think, Steve, if I'm not very much mistaken, two guys have taken advantage of you. <laughs> Answer that I thought because politicians every year some politician will get caught up with uh, oh how much is a flump how much is a bag of flumps these days <laughs> <laughs> and obviously none of them can say I'm, a, I'm running the country someone gets my milk all right <laughs> I've got shit to do I don't buy milk the person that wasn't flummoxed by that question was of course Boris Johnson take a look at this your the question who wants to reduce the top rate of uh, tax to 40 per, 40p in the pound don't you yeah I, I mean, I, I'm also the man who cut uh, council tax year after year. In, in London, and uh, you, which, which, which helps every household. Do you even know the, which helps the cost of a pint of milk? And uh, about 80p or something like that? No, it's about 40 something p. Okay, well, big, I mean, a bit, a, a, one, a, one oh, of those biggish ones. This is a classic Boris, isn't it? You're going to change now the sort of milk. I said a pint of milk. All right, a pint of milk. Okay, about 40. Well, there you go. I don't know the pint of, how much a pint of milk costs. No, so what? Well, don't you think you should, if you're concerned about the cost of living? How much is a, how much is a loaf of bread? I'm not standing for election. <laughs> you are. <laughs> the thing I like about that is the next time he's being interviewed and that comes up, they go, how much is a pint of milk? He's going to go, oh, shit, I knew I meant to remember. <laughs> You, you've been to a Tory party conference, haven't you, Jamelia? Yeah. Honestly, it was the most boring thing ever. <laughs> Every single... Like, like, they had all these, like, meetings in different rooms, and I was like, I don't care, I don't care what you've got to say. It was so boring. And then that man, that man from Queen with the hair, you know, what's his name? Brian Him, May. anyway. Brian, Brian May. May. Yeah. I swear, he came up to me and he was like, look, Jamelia, I would love you to support my cause. He wanted me to save some badgers. I was like, <laughs> I swear... I swear... <laughs> Let's see if the Tory party conference is up there. <laughs> yes, the Tory party conference. The conference started with a short film about Margaret Thatcher, which got a standing ovation. To be fair, it has got a brilliant ending. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. What else have the nation been talking about? Is it the case that the Jackson family have tried to sue uh, um, the, the promoter? AEG, hired, yes, the promoters of the concert. Conrad Murray. And uh, they lost. So right. the Jackson family tried to sue AEG for $1.6 billion in damages. And I was really pleased when I, uh, this story came up because I always think, Michael Jackson, it's the death that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> the comics, you know, you know, comic for comics, it's just great because you can just come up, as soon as it, any story with him, you go, brilliant, we can do all the Jackson jokes again. <laughs> Get them out. I think comedians should actually build a statue, a monument to him, just to say thanks. <laughs> <laughs> can I just clarify, are they, are yeah. they suing the... 
the production company, whatever it's called, for murder? No, they, no. they were suing the production company because they hired, hired the doctor hired the that administered the drugs yeah. that killed Michael Jackson. Kind of but murder. The best, the best not, story is... Not kind of murder, kind no, of. no. <laughs> Remember what I just said? It was that, not murder. <laughs> Sort of murder. Quite, they call it quite murder. <laughs> what happened was that the production company provided Michael Jackson with a doctor, who then provided Michael Jackson with a huge array of... I mean, they found, they found I mean, something like 78 different types of drugs in, in his bedroom uh, when he was dead, when they looked. And the most worrying of them was cowpole. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Or his own personal favourite, Rehipsilix. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them were sedatives and relaxants. I'm surprised he wasn't carried around in liquid form. <laughs> <laughs> in a tank, like, just sloshing around. He gets his mic all ready for his next rehearsal. We just pour him out onto the stage. Well, the sad thing is, a lot of people... people he did just keeps know. giving! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <People>. Michael! <laughs> Not easy, not easy being Michael Jackson's doctor, though, cos, you know, you ring out and go, ow, 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 what's the matter, Michael? I'm, I'm rehearsing, I'm fine. <laughs> so, oh, come on. <laughs> so, thank you to Michael for that. Yeah, thank you, Michael, thank you. <laughs> thankfully, uh, um, well, I, um, thankfully, not for the Jackson family, but uh, they lost, didn't they, to AEG? Yeah. They lost their case. And I was thinking, what would AEG have done if... The Jackson family had won. They owed them £1.6 billion. The only way they could make that money back, I think, is by digging up Jacko's corpse and doing, like, a Weekend at Bernie's thing. Like a... <laughs> <laughs> a show <-mo. laughs> We've got the operator right here, if you want to give it... <laughs> but that's what I thought when I heard the case, cos when you hear these cases, you think, oh, £1.6 billion, you think, well, it won't bring him back, will it? And I thought... That almost could. <laughs> That's that almost enough money to reanimate Michael Jackson, yeah. I think. You get the right people involved. $1.6 billion. You could have a bloody good go with that. <laughs> he was on so many sedatives, it's possible that he's not even dead. <laughs> he's just... <laughs> he'll open it up and he'll... Uh, let's go. <laughs> you think Michael Jackson might just need to sleep it off? <laughs> <laughs> Someone should go and check on him. <laughs> it's not a bad thought. Um, they, got, they got rid of his statue, didn't they, off, um, yeah. up at Fulham? Alpha had invited him to a, fo a football match, and uh, he, hadn't, he, went, he went to see Fulham versus Wigan. <laughs> I like the idea that Alpha had rang him up and said, uh, "Yeah, is that Michael? Yeah, who's that? It's, it's Alpha Ed." And he says, uh, "Do you want to go for a, a football match? What? Who's playing Wigan? Yeah, yeah." I'm, I'm, I'm... <laughs> Because new owners bought Fulham. New owners bought Fulham, they took the statue down. And it's a bit like, you know, when you move into a new house and you think, well, the first thing is going is that avocado bathroom. <laughs> We're going to get rid of that pebble dashing. And the statue of the paedophile out the front. That's <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can tell you that's not one of the most talked about things this week, but promoters of Michael Jackson's ill-fated tour have been found not guilty in a lawsuit brought by the Jackson family. The Jackson family claimed that AEG had ignored signs that Michael was in poor health, little tell-tale signs like when his face fell off. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. It must be the return of the X Factor. Which is why Kurt Cobain killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's different now because there's chairs. The chairs are good, aren't they? There's chair. Oh, I love a chair, mate. Don't like the singing or any of the people involved, but those chairs. <laughs> wow, I was gripped. Oh, right, someone's gonna sit added... on it. Oh, they're sitting on it. Oh, what it's a added a new level of cruelty. It's horrendous. I think they should have chairs and nooses. So. <laughs> So you have to stand on a chair with a noose around your neck <laughs> and then Dermot O'Leary just comes and kicks it away from you. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, just explain to us what happens with the chairs, just yeah, in case so, anyone hasn't seen it. So what, what happens is the so, people who've all been voted through... So all... what we do now is we've got down to the list where there's a shy gay one and there's the girl who egged off her mates who clearly wanted to be famous and was never her mates anyway, <laughs> and a thin man and a fat one. <laughs> There. There's the Irish one as well, and the novelty <laughs> shit one. They're all there. <laughs> that musical chairs, there's seven of them, but there's only six chairs. 
But instead of taking them back and breaking their hearts, they put them on chairs and they break their hearts live on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty awesome. But you mentioned there the novelty one. There isn't a novelty one this year. They're all brilliant. Take a look at this. What you want, baby, I got it. What you need, don't you know that I got it? All I'm asking is for a little respect when you come home. Hey, baby, when you come home. That's good. That guy is. Did he get through? That guy is great. Did he get through? Did he get through? No, he didn't. He didn't oh. get through because he yodelled. <laughs> <laughs> that is someone who has got mates who said, "Yeah, I think you should yodel right in the middle." Of it. <laughs> now you presented Steve the American version of X Factor. Were they crazier than ours? Were they? Were they saner? Um, I've never actually seen ours. Not once. You've never seen the British version? Well, no, I, I wanted. I went over there and I thought I'll just do my own thing. And then at the end of the season, they were like, "It's no." <laughs> Yeah. Well, good on you. And I, I, no, no, just, I mean, Dermot's a fantastic presenter, but he does what he does. I didn't want to look at what he does and go over to the States and do that. I thought, well, I'll go well, in I there. think you should have, because a lot of people, Steve, me included, find you very attractive. And the thing Dermot's done... <laughs> yeah. The thing Dermot's done this time, and it's been on all the papers, is he's had a bit of a bulge. That's been the talking point this Where? year. Where? He's... well... <laughs> <laughs> In the papers, they said the viewing figures have gone up by 900,000 because of Dermot's bulge. Shut uh, up. I want to see this. Well, have a look. That's his mobile. Is phone? Yeah, that is a phone. Uh, he looks, no, no, uh, but if you look carefully, he's charging the phone with his penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit weird. It's behind my head like that. That's... <laughs> feels a bit disconcerting. <laughs> Steve, when you found out it wasn't you weren't doing an, uh, any more of it, what, how, what, how did you find out? Who told you? Uh, I was on my way uh, to Runyon Canyon to go for a run, and yeah. uh, they rang. I was in my car, said, "Are oh, they not picking up for season two? And I was like, "Cool, I'm just going to go on my run." So I did, yeah. and that was that. And off the cliff you went. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you've been on uh, X Factor Ukraine. Oh, oh, please don't show me. <laughs> Certain, certain, oh. certain shows, you have to understand, right? Honest to God, they gave me shit loads of money, so that's why I was there. I'm not gonna lie. And just don't show me, don't show no, anything. No, I'm, I'm not gonna show. I think if you're willing to do things you don't want to do for shit loads of money, I think <laughs> no, you're the girl for me. No, 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 no. I would, I would show it, but I don't have the clip. Oh, well, yeah. well, <laughs> yes. Let's have a look and see if X Factor is up there. X-Factor is underway. Dermot O'Leary says millions of extra viewers have tuned in in order to see his trouser bulge. Oh, Dermot, put a sock in it. Oh, wait, hang on, you have. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean, Jack and Jamila have two points. John, Steve and David have three points. <laughs> so our next round is pick of the polls. Sean, Jack and Jamelia, pick a question. The puppy. You're going to go for the puppy, OK. Yeah. Most people find spending time with animals relaxing. <laughs> True or false, what do you think? Depends how much gravy there is. <laughs> <laughs> Anim animals are not relaxing at all. They're I find them very stressful. I've got a little dog, which... Actually, thanks for that. The last time I was on the show, I spoke about my dog, and everyone thought that I meant that I killed my previous dog. I didn't kill my previous dog. I just gave him away. <laughs> well, now you sound like a lovely person. No. <laughs> then I got another dog, a smaller one, who does smaller poos, and that was my main issue. Who did that you give the big dog to? Um, I gave him to the police. <laughs> do, do you know what? At least I was an honest dog owner, and I didn't, I didn't, you know, ill-treat it. The RSPCA didn't have to come round to my house and say, you know, you're terrible, you are. I was honest, and I said, I can't cope. You know, you can't do that with children. Well, you know, you can do it with <laughs> Jack, do you, find, do you find animals relaxing? Yeah, I do, actually. What, I... Have you got any pets? I have pets, yeah. What have you got? 
I've got two dogs, two Dachshunds. I find them relaxing to be around. That's not a dog. Yeah, don't that's you. That's not a dog. Don't you diss the no, Dachshund. That's not a dog. It is, it's, a, it is. it's, it's, it's like it's, a, it's a sawn off Doberman. Yeah. <laughs> I had a very relaxing summer with animals because um, I was paid by the government to shoot badgers. <laughs> very relaxing. Every time I pulled that trigger, there was another hundred quid in the bank. <laughs> I, I've got these... Oh, I need to know how to kill moles. There's loads of moles. <laughs> no, there's, they you, keep coming They call me the go-to guy. <laughs> this is what you do. You don't need to kill them. Oh. You need to get them to visit somewhere else. What you do is put books in your neighbour's garden. <laughs> and they come up and go, ooh, a lovely book. Yeah. They put their little glasses on it. <laughs> they read. Yeah. Apparently, there's a time of year when badgers mate and if you are walking through a badgery part of the woods, they, you're advised to carry a stick because if the badger grabs your leg, it won't release till it hears the crack of bone. So you have to get the stick and break it over your knee. And the badger hears that and goes, ha ha, and runs off. <laughs> but how could you possibly not be holding a stick and not go, fuck off, badger? <laughs> Steve, you've got, you've got a dog, right? I have two dogs, yes. Very, uh, very I, relaxing beasts. Do you like him? I love them, yeah. I mean, I, I wish they grow so, like, like opposable thumbs, so, you know, I get a bit tense back here, or maybe like a candle if I'm in the bath. <laughs> so I feel just... like you spend a lot of time tickling their tummies and getting them yeah. relaxed, and then yeah. they don't... Exactly. I'm cleaning up all their shit, and I'm not getting much from it. Well, I've got a picture of your dog. <laughs> Have you? So, yeah, because your Twitter feed... You... Oh, hey, that's my boy. <laughs> he is adorable. And you would think, if I had a dog like that, oh, my God, you'd love him. He's so adorable. Steve, not a good owner. Look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wash him in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try that at home. I didn't switch it on. Is that the day you found out about the X Factor job? <laughs> so the question is, most people find spending time with animals relaxing. Let's put it to the test. John, uh, I've got a little treat for you. Let's bring on a little puppy. There he is. Oh. She's a little mastiff. That's just a puppy. I think she's only 12 weeks old. Oh, Which size are those guy. paws? That's <laughs> the tastiest, isn't it? <laughs> Have a little stroke. What? Is that not the most adorable creature? Oh, my God. Green I... eyes. Huh? Green eyes. Green eyes. It's the one from Turner and Hooch. It's exciting. Amazing. <laughs> you can all leave now whenever you want. I'll just... <laughs> so, John, I can already see you look elated and relaxed. John, do you want to take her for a little walk? No, because yeah, she doesn't like John. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh. Bring her around the front, take her for a little walk, because she's the most adorable creature. That's Steve. Hello. Hey, you mate? Yeah, everyone likes Steve. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Hello. How are you? Didn't think you'd let dogs on a show with cats in the tail, but fair play to you. <laughs> Come on, sit him down. So cute. Pretty adorable, right? Oh. Look at that, happy little creature. Sean, you look grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Do not understand. But the reason we... I mean, I don't understand how people have animals in their homes. I don't understand that. We built homes to keep animals out. <laughs> <laughs> it done? Genuinely never seen John look happier. <laughs> look at his little face. It's almost cuter than the dog. <laughs> John, we're going to have to say goodbye to the puppy. Oh, you're going to have to hand... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to do a Jamelia. <laughs> I have a feeling this is, the, this is the calm before some desperate, desperate storm now. <laughs> Meet the only great white shark <laughs> currently <laughs> living on land in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> ah. We've got brilliant handlers in today for all the animals. I say all the animals. Oh, cause, God. No, because we got you a puppy, so we thought it would be only fair, Sean, to get you an animal. Oh, no. I think you'll like it. I genuinely think you'll like it. <laughs> oh, no! No, no, no. No, no, Sean, are you not...? No, no. no. <laughs> well, I'll have... Bring, it, bring, it, bring him over here. Are you not...? Are you genuinely...? I don't want to... No. Just yeah, stick him on my neck, it's fine. Um, are you genuinely not keen on snakes? No. Is that not your thing? Sure, it won't bite me. Is that it's well, a I've boa constrictor. Do you know it won't? Huh? Anyway, Go on, boa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look how it it's moves. It's amazing. It likes you, Jimmy, because you're cold-blooded as well. <laughs> oh. It feels like some of my shoes. <laughs> oh, hang on. It, oh. Oh, round the neck, actually. You can really feel how... how they do their thing. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Close he gets. Yeah, Maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not too worried. Oh, hang on. Oh, 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 oh you little flirt. <laughs> that is nice. Oh, 
It's nice to hold something that thick and powerful. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> you don't want me to look at you while I'm touching it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Have a my, go? my main question is, if you, if it kills you, will this be one of the stories on the show next week? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty calm and relaxed with that. I, I sort of think he's amazing. I love him. Oh my god! <laughs> he gave me a look there that suggested that was not mutual. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> okay, John Steen, how do you feel about spiders? I would rather be in a different country. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> Bring on the spider. Uh, really, really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? You, it's a tiny little spider. Are you kidding me? It's just a spider. <laughs> it's just a massive oh. spider. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they being so weird about spiders? <laughs> okay, just hold your hand oh, very mate. still. Okay. Hold it. Here you go. Oh, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Take a seat. Well, go on. You jump. Down. This is brilliant, Steve. You are taking a hit for the team here. This. <laughs> a hit of pure poison. Just hold your hand completely still. No. 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 Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. I'm going to do something oh. terrible to you. You're being oh. incredibly brave and handsome, Steve. <laughs> Wow. Okay, we can say goodbye to the spider. Who's? I mean, thank you, Sam. We've got expert handlers in with us today. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible to see. You guys just went. You bolted when that came on. Would, would you have hold the spider? The only thing I want to see with eight legs in my house is a KFC bucket. <laughs> so you didn't like the snake. No. You loved the puppy. Didn't like the spider. Let's bring in a tiger. Can we bring on a baby <gasps> tiger? Let's bring on a tiger. Uh, me. So we've got a lovely <laughs> tiger. Sometimes that's, if a tiger's being that's a little bit active. That's an actual tiger. That's an actual tiger. Oh there you go. God. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> John, uh, Sean, would you like to come over and have a stroke? No. I want to. <laughs> John? I'm pretty close to having a stroke from over here, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, that is a massive tiger. Just tiger. see if you find this relaxing. How that old is a is tiger cub. So he's about 14 weeks old. And, it, it, and when they get to, what, four months, you can no longer do this. Oh, nice. Just a bunny. <laughs> We're hoping for a month he'll still be like this. You have oh, a month oh, like oh. this. It's amazing. Oh, he loves his bowl, doesn't he? Yes, he does. <laughs> so our handlers are incredibly well-trained and experienced, and I think they're going to lay down their own lives when he finishes this milk so that I'm not harmed. Take the bottle out, see what happens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't you put your head there and I'll do that. <laughs> I like that someone somewhere has just switched on this show for the first time and gone, 8 out of 10 cats, it is about cats. <laughs> Come on, Tiger, go for a little walk. Well, thanks very much to all the animals and handlers. Give them a round of applause. OK, let's get some answers. So, most people find spending time with animals relaxing true or false. What are you going to go for? I think me and you would say false, but I think most people are going to say true. Yeah. So, are you, we'll go are you going, Sean? You're going true. true? OK, John, what would you say? I enjoyed that. Yeah, I feel relaxed. Yeah? I leave it in your hands. <laughs> true. Well, I can tell you the answer is true. 72% of people do find spending time with animals relaxing. <laughs> I like spending time with my favourite animal in my basement. It's a sort of centipede. I made it myself. It was a lot of work, and it's a bit messy, makes a hell of a noise, but it was worth it. <laughs> John, Steve, David, pick a question. Uh, who's the guy in the hat? What? Walter White. Walter White is yeah. in uh, Cluedo. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Breaking Bad. Ah, Walter White off of Breaking Bad. So, this week, thousands complained about having the series finale of Breaking Bad ruined by spoilers. So we asked our studio audience, would you be angry with someone if they accidentally spoiled the end of your favourite TV show? Yes or no? I watched the first season, and then I binned it off after that. I thought it was crap. <laughs> it's a very good show. It's a brilliantly written show. Well, according to IMDb, Breaking Bad is the second best show ever, according to audience ratings, and that's after David Attenborough's Planet Earth. Well, they've obviously never seen Why Don't You. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever spoiled a TV show for you? Like something that you were into? Yeah, they've, they've just made them. 
Some programs, though, you know, if you, like, you know at the end of Grand Designs, they're going to be living in an <laughs> office in a field. <laughs> Drinking wine out of glasses this size, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's <laughs> turned out brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Porn films always end the same, don't they? Porn films do always end the same. They do, they always end the same with self loathing. <laughs> a frantic, yeah. a frantic grasp for tissues. Like, oh, God, I suppose I'd better get on and cook the Christmas lunch. <laughs> I emerged from behind the Christmas tree in my new slippers. <laughs> it wouldn't ruin this show if someone said, and by the way, John's team... Oh, well, there's no point in watching it now. <laughs> I know how this show's going to end. This show will end with a horrible noise, and then you'll go, that noise tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show. Don't Thanks ruin it. Our... They don't know that. <laughs> to all our studio audience and to you at home for joining in. If you want more, tune in to 8 out of 10, Cats Uncut. Good night. <laughs> Um, right, let's get some answers on this. So, um, what do you think? Uh, would people be angry if someone accidentally yeah. spoiled the end of their yeah, favourite of TV show? Yes, yes or no? Yeah. You guys, you in agreement? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you the answer is 84% of people would be angry with someone if they accidentally spoiled the end of their TV show. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. And here's your question. Top thing men worry about. The main, uh, the main thing I worry about as a man is the assumption that I know more about wine than anyone else at the table. <laughs> they pour a little bit, always in my glass. I don't know. Oh, because okay. you're the I only like... one at the table. <laughs> there is that. There is that. See, do you worry uh... about anything? Uh, sometimes giving directions. <laughs> I want to come across as if I'm very manly and I want to know that you know that, so I'm like, oh, you got to... I need to incorporate, like, manly destinations. Oh, just go past the Red Lion, then go past the sex shop, <laughs> then, like, the engine yards right by my engines, and you're pretty much there. <laughs> go to the beach, that way. <laughs> <laughs> David, what, what do you worry about? Uh, keeping things charged, mostly. <laughs> Especially the new operating system on my phone has got, like, the percentage... So you're like, 76%? Oh! <laughs> Quick, shut down things. Don't touch it. Leave it. We get an extra 20 minutes out of this tomorrow. <laughs> what do you think men worry about, Jamelia? I, I, you know, I, I can only... I genuinely can only think of one thing, and I'm, I don't want to say it because I just think my nan might be watching... Well, go on, just say it. It's fine. It's late night. No, She's not I, watching I, this. Just... Right. Whisper it what to time? me. Whisper it to me, and I'll say it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> 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 I can't even say anything. Write it down, write it down, write it down. Write it down. <laughs> we'll just draw a picture of one. <laughs> Come on, what, what do you think, Jamelia? It's, um, it's a nine-letter word. <laughs> a premature ejaculation. Ooh, you saucy cow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's the only thing I can think about. Or oh, finding out the football score's too early, so one or the, one or the other. <laughs> it's all about being early with you, isn't it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Penises are just a pain in the arse. They're bit of... um... <laughs> when they're when they're up and about, they're an inconvenience. And when they're not, they're always there, aren't they? It's better to have a thing that's in, I think. Are you saying you'd rather have a vagina because it'd be tidier? <laughs> That's insane! <laughs> That's the most insane thing you've ever said. <laughs> you like things to be tidy, but you're basically saying, oh, I'd like to be castrated, cos then it'd be neater. <laughs> Jack, do you ever find yourself worrying? I worry about stuff that I've done in the past, and what if it had done, you know, like, oh, what, when I was on that rowboat on holiday, what if someone had come out in a motorboat and shot me? <laughs> or... <laughs> And then the next night, something else comes. What, what if that on the aeroplane there'd been a hijack? What, then what, what would I have done? Just say hello back. Yeah. Oh, hijack. That's <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> OK, top thing men worry about. I think I've got it. Great. Go on, what do you think? Is it the size, their size? Of their... Of their... No, but it is size. No. Getting fat. That's the right answer. <laughs> Yes, men's biggest worries are putting on weight and going grey. Either way, the solution is the same. Diet.
Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Jack and Jamelia have four points. John, Steve and David are the winners with seven points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it, and somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.